for a lot of differential equations, there's not a known technique as, as to how to solve them. It's very frustrating sometimes. You know, you'll be given this differential equation and uh, it just doesn't either have a solution or the solution is very, very difficult to find. Well, it turns out that there's actually a plan B. Um, if the differential equation is first order, then we can use these things called either slope fields or direction fields. That's the same thing um, to approximate what the solution is. And that's a, a big relief so that if you can't if you can't solve the differential equation, this is a fallback plan to where you can at, at the very least approximate what the solution would be. So we're, in this video, we're going to take a look. At, uh, at how you uh, draw a slope field. Um, we're not really gonna do any examples in this video. That'll come in the next video, but um, we're just gonna kind of introduce what a slope field is and, uh, and how you use them exactly. All right, so, so here's the idea. If you have a first order differential equation, and I do have to stress, this only works for first order differential equations. We talked about order in the last video and categorizing differential equations, but um, if the highest uh, derivative present in the differential equation is a first derivative, then you can do this. Then, uh, then the idea is this, you can take your uh, dy dx, the first derivative, We'll put that on the left-hand side of the equality, and then we'll throw everybody else on the right-hand side. This can always be done anytime your differential equation is first order. They, they all, they have to have a dy dx, right? That's what makes it first order. So you just isolate that guy and, and stick him on the left-hand side, and then anybody who doesn't have a dy dx will either subtract it or divide it or throw it on the right hand side, which will in effect make uh, what you would call a function uh, that has X's and Y's. And so it could be anything. I mean, you could have something like dy dx, and if you isolate everything else on the right side, it could be X plus three over Y squared. I mean, who, who knows what it, what it could be, but my point is simply that you can isolate the dy dx on the left and everything else on the right. Okay, now he, here's where here's where slope fields come in. Um, having this model, having this set up like this, it shows you that you can find the slope associated at any point, and that's going to be a huge help as we'll see in a minute. Uh, meaning, like if you want to know for, for this differential equation what the slope associated with the point two two is. You could plug 2, 2 into the right-hand side, and this will give you a numerical value, and dy dx equals that number. And so that's the slope, that's the first derivative, the slope associated with that point. If you want the slope associated with the point 3, 5, well then plug in 3, 5 into the right-hand side and you get dy dx equals a new number. So it turns out that every point in the plane is associated with some slope. Now, how does that help us you know, approximate the, uh, the solution to the differential equation? We'll talk about that in a second, but, um, but let's at least understand that much right now, is that um, putting it in this form is the first thing we do, and that every point is associated with a slope. Okay, so here's just a, a just an abstract picture of what one could look like. Once you've isolated the dy dx, you have everything on the right hand side. Typically, what happens is you get these nice pictures for these slope fields. They they follow typically uh, some sort of um, some sort of pattern for these slope fields. Uh, these slope fields, they'll, they'll uh, typically look like waves that either go up or go down or go around in a circular pattern or, you know, they, they vary problem to problem, but they'll look something like this. And so here you can kind of see what I was saying. If you pick a specific point, then the point that, and you plug it in the differential equation, dy dx would tell you what the slope needs to be right here or what the slope needs to be right here. Or, you know, or right here, or right here, or anywhere in the plane. Okay, now now let's start wrapping this up. What, what does this help you with? Like, how does this help you solve the differential equation? Well, think about it. If you're looking for a function who satisfies the differential equation, in other words, when you take its derivative, it winds up being these things, then that uh, unknown mystery solution curve should have these slopes at these particular places. 
And so you see these slope fields kind of push you in a particular direction. For instance, uh, this curve could not be the solution to this differential equation. Why? Well, at any given point, let's just take a point like this, for instance, its slope does not match what the direction field says it should be, right? Um, there's certain curves that would be solutions, and you can kind of see them. They're the ones who, for lack of a better word, flow nicely, flow nicely through the slope field. So you can see this would be a solution to the differential equation. This would be a solution to the differential equation. Typically, there are lots of solutions to a given differential equation. Okay, so here's the key principle that we need to know. We can see what the solution looks like. We can see graphical pictures of the solution. If somebody gives us some initial condition for the differential equation, like the solution has to go through the point 1, 1, or something like that, then given an initial condition, you can actually sketch what the solution curve would be for that differential equation. For this example, it would look something like this. Okay, so that, that's important to know. Now, what's the downside? What, what's the bad news? The bad news is, is I have no idea who this is. I mean, that, that's the bad news. So I'm looking at the solution. That, that graph represents the solution to this differential equation. And if I could write him out, I would. But just looking at a graph, you know, we, we don't really know what the solution uh, is just based off of a graph typically. Sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I mean one out of 10 times or one out of 100 times, you might get lucky and you might be able to look at this graph and say, oh, hey, I know who that is. That looks like e to the x or that looks like whatever. And so if that's the case, you might stumble across what the actual solution is and be able to write down a formula for it. But, you know, nine times out of 10, all you're going to get away with is just drawing the solution curve. But that's not bad. I mean, it's better than nothing. So for these differential equations that are very difficult to solve, you know, I'll, I'll take this. This is better than nothing, being able to see the solution curve, even if you can't exactly write it down. Now, I'm going to give you something to do. I would recommend you do this. Google or, or look online or do a search for direction field like Java applet. There's there's a lot of great free programs out there that um, that let you actually type in a first order differential equation like this and it'll show you it'll show you a uh, picture of the slope field and um, and you can actually just you, typically on most of these applets click in different places and it will draw all of the solution curves this is is pretty pretty neat and pretty helpful to kind of get a a good grasp of how these direction fields or slope fields work all right now uh, what would be very helpful is if we did an example um, to keep this video from getting too long i'm not going to do an example in this video but what i'll do is i'll give you a sneak peek at this at the uh, next video the upcoming video so if you want to jot this one down and try it before we do it uh, together you're welcome to do that here's the the example i'm going to do in just a moment it's x dy dx plus y equals zero okay so this is first order so i think direction fields would be applicable slope fields would be applicable and so what you can do is you can solve for dy dx so we have to do a little algebra solve for dy dx and get it equal to something on the the right hand side uh, that something will be your um, function of x and y and you can generate you can draw the slope field based off of trial and error points that you pick for this guy. So I, I'll give you give you a little bit more of a, a sneak peek. What we're going to do is we're going to have a table where we pick some points and then we find the slopes that go with them and then we're going to draw the entire slope field. So uh, uh, you can go ahead and try that right now if you want to or you can just wait to, <laughs> for me to do it in the next video. But, um, but either way, I hope you have a, a little bit better understanding for slope fields now and what they're used for and, uh, and how we create them.